Um, I, I'm speaking on first person the microphone so that it's recorded. <coughs> huh? No. Well, the camera is here anyway. <laughs> so whether we're here or over there, it doesn't matter really. I think. Rene, do you see us? Rene? We don't hear Rene. Yeah. Oui, tu... Do you hear me, please? Oui, on t'entend, c'est bien. Are you... Okay. Are you here? You see me here. Okay. Good. So we have Yamen here. Emmanuel, Ruby. Sorry putting you on the hot spot here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um... So welcome everyone to this session dedicated to education programs, resources, tools in the offline or poorly connected world. Uh, important question, does anyone understand English or is there, are there some, you speak French, but you speak English. René, is that okay with you if we are fully in English or do you need us to speak part of it in French? Uh, I speak in French. Sorry about uh, I'm full, I'm fluently uh, French speaking, but I can try to English, but it's no, not no. my main. So, so uh, then uh, you speak. Yeah. You speak. Uh, tu parles en français. Je traduis s'il faut. Mais c'est ouais. okay si tu nous entends okay. en anglais. Tout ça va. Ouais. Okay. Ouais, ça okay. va. Ça marche pour moi. J'entends l'anglais. Good. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, before we start a short summary, there is a. Um, Wikipedia, Wikimedia of offline user group. Uh, as does everyone is aware of it? No, yes. Wikipedia. Okay, so we have set up a few years ago a user group, which is an affiliated, uh, super informal group um, approved by the Wikimedia Foundation. So if you need any information, the group is mentioned on the meta page. Most of the pages are updated. Yeah, I fear, but at least the basic pages are here and we can communicate through Telegram channels or very few people use it or the offline mailing list. And of course, the names of the people interested in the topic are mentioned, so it's, it's very easy to get in contact with them. So here you have a couple of the people. This guy was initially not on, on, on this panel, but he's here and since he's an important person in the offline, is on the hot spot. And there's, uh, so that's Emmanuel from Kiwix. Uh, next to him is uh, Ruby, Ruby from uh, Off War Open Foundation West Africa, and then you can explain more. And then we have, uh, uh, sorry, you, we have Rene. Uh, Rene, who got involved in several offline projects as well. So he was involved with me with the, uh, one of my projects, which I will mention afterwards. And in 2023, he will run uh, Kiwix for School program, if I understood well. And uh, as far as I am concerned, I am involved in two ways. Back in 2017, we created, with the help of Kiwix, um, a system, um, a software called Wikifundi, which allowed to edit Wikipedia offline or to edit Wiki pages offline. And I've been running a project called Wiki Challenge Ecole d'Afrique. Uh, with, um, within a partnership with the Fondation Orange since uh, 2017 as well. So this panel was actually initially suggested by René. Uh, so I will uh, lead him, leave him speak first. Um, unfortunately, I think René didn't get a scholarship, so that's why he's online. But um, René, please, please, can you introduce yourself, start and maybe explain your project? Okay, uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, and, and for this hand up, uh, Florence. Uh, okay, my name is uh, René Billet uh, and my username uh, for 
Wikimedia project, Wikimedian project is delayed in it. Um, yeah, so what is the concern today is offline education discussion. It's the panel uh, which is the concern today. So, so it's many uh, discussion about the, the, the project around the education on uh, rural rural uh, rural areas yeah uh, i will continue in, in in french because it's my main yeah, yeah. <laughs> cameroon is bilingual so i can i can speak a, 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 a bit in english and i can try I, I can try myself to understand english but i'm not fluent on that so i will continue in french thank you alors, Wikimedia offre de nombreuses possibilités dans divers domaines à travers le monde. L'éducation y trouve peu à peu ses marques. Plusieurs continents suivis le pas, malgré le taux de pénétration d'Internet très faible dans, ce, dans certains pays. C'est le cas de l'Afrique et c'est le cas également de plusieurs euh, zones villages, on appelle zones rurales, pour être plus commodes. Donc, c'est le cas de it's not only in africa right uh, okay so i will start while he before he comes back so one of the the point he mentioned Mais quelques is that... activités notamment uh, comme uh, la gif quelques activités et prévoyons et prévoyons continuer dans ce sens au regard de la population jeune qui se trouve dans sur le continent africain et davantage pour réduire considérablement le gap d'informations qu'on pourrait enregistrer entre les populations euh, en zone rurale et celles en zone urbaine. Donc le focus ici, c'est les ah, populations attends, 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 en attends, zone rurale attends. qui ne bénéficient pas davantage. Allô, René, tu m'entends, ouais. René René, tu m'entends Okay, I, my memory span is about three words, oui. so um, I, I cannot remember so much. L let me uh, tell a little bit about all the English, uh, to the English speakers here, okay? So uh, what René was okay, saying okay. is that... Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the, the Wikipedia project um, has been expanding for the past 22 years now, but it still has some difficulty to get set up and uh, penetrate some places in the world. So, he, of course, he's speaking from Africa, but it's also the case of some South American places, even though there's no South African people. But you can probably mention that because you ha WikiWix has been working with some, uh, some places in South Africa, uh, South America about this. So what is in particular mentioning is uh, internet access complicated in Africa generally, but in particular in rural areas. Uh, I could mention as well, that's my words, that it's not only a question of uh, rural or versus city, it's all not only a question of internet with internet or without internet. It's more generally the problem of reliability of uh, data connection in terms of speed. So if I take the example of um, Cape Town, which some of you uh, know as being my second hometown now, because uh, Wiki, uh, Wiki in Africa Association is located in Cape Town. Well, Cape Town doesn't have electricity 24 hours a day, even though it's a very big city. It has currently internet only about two thirds of the day. So every couple of hours, they have a two hours without electricity entirely. So people survive by filling up batteries and then being offline for two hours and, and going all day along like this. And as many of you has, have experienced, it's also sometimes without internet or with a poor connection or a connection that goes on and off. So um, uh, the other thing that René was mentioning is the, the fact that um, a significant part of the population is quite young. Uh, so there's, he, he has been working in this area, in particular with the young people. Go on, René. Yeah, uh, and that we need to reduce the gap of uh, information uh, between the, 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 the population of uh, rural areas and the urban areas. That is our, our focus too. Did you notice that he moved back to English? All by himself. 
<rire> yeah, yeah. Ok, euh, alors, il serait, quand, quand, quand on a dit ça, il serait important, <rire> il serait important de préciser l'intérêt que nous portons pour les zones rurales. Euh, Celles-ci enregistrent un déphasage en matière d'accès à l'information qui est l'une des priorités des objectifs du millénaire pour le développement. Donc, travailler sur les populations, euh, sur, sur les populations de, ces, euh, de ces zones autour des projets tels que euh, Kiwix euh, for School, euh, notamment également Reading, Reading Wikipédia in Classroom, euh, pourrait améliorer les chiffres du droit à l'éducation et le droit à l'accès à l'information. Alors, nos objectifs autour de ce panel, euh, ce sera d'échanger sur les, les initiatives wikimédiennes en matière d'éducation en zone rurale, d'échanger également sur les projets wikimédiens, wikimédiens ou non, euh, permettant l'accès à la connaissance libre en zone rurale, de partager l'expérience d'éducation des TIC en matière, en, au travers de Wikipédia ou bien de Wikimédia et ses projets frères en zone rurale, et de trouver en dernier ressort les voies et moyens pour permettre d'étendre l'implémentation des... à, travers, à travers le monde. Euh... Okay. Je, je vais laisser la parole à Florence, qui sera la première intervenante. Je vais moins intervenir parce que bon, le panel il est, il est, il est assez fourni. C'est beaucoup d'expérience, donc je vais laisser euh, l'espace la, à Florence et ensuite... Le, le, les autres pour pouvoir nous entretenir sur la question d'éducation hors ligne. Je vous remercie. Merci René. Uh, so he said that in particular he was mostly interested uh, with the question of um, setting up programs in rural areas, uh, which is an important point because in fact most of the programs are actually set up in cities, uh, if only for uh, access questions because it costs money to tra go and travel and access all the schools. Um, and the second thing I wanted to do is to discuss both the initiative, the resources, but and the tools and the different programs. He mentioned in particular two programs, so that's the Kiwi, uh, Kiwix for School program. And uh, he also mentioned Wikipedia in your classroom. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you, I, I don't know how familiar you are with these, all, all the tools and programs that are currently existing in the offline sector. Uh, how much are you aware of that? And what are you mostly interested with yourself? Do you have an offline program? Do you want to set one up from scratch? What's the current situation for you? Anthony. And if you have no idea, just want to come here because it's warm, that's fine as well. All right, so there was a time where we engaged with Wikifundi, but you have not done much in my community for that. Yeah. Okay, so I, I will super quickly comment on, on each of the mentioned, Don. The Wikifundi is the tool that we created in 2017. It was done way after the, the job done by uh, Kiwix which is more about giving access to a whole bunch of resources way beyond Wikimedia itself. In our case, it was mostly to try to find a way to make it possible for them to try editing on a wiki. Because consuming is one thing, but pro becoming producer is a second thing. So it was uh, interesting to see what. What about you? What is your Concerning offline, uh, so I'm Mati from Wikimedia France and I'm a project, like education project manager. And uh, we don't really have an offline uh, program so far, but I think we could, we should definitely set something like for rural, rural part of France that don't have a lot of connection. And there's definitely something, there is something to do, to be done. I don't think there are so many places in France without... Yes? Oh, wait, just a second. René, do you want to comment something? No, I, just, I just said good. I just said good uh, for the initiative uh, uh, France. Yeah. One thing I would like to mention, I would like to ask you to say a few words about Wikidia and what you want to do with Wiki, Wiki, Wikidia. Thank you, Florence. Um, well, we should definitely try to promote the use of Wikidia as a learning tool. 
because uh, Wikipedia has like shown to be complicated for 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 teenagers, because editing there has become uh, sort of uh, a battlefield. <laughs> Since uh, when you're a beginner, you don't necessarily know the rules or uh, you make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes, you're learning. But the, the, some editors will be uh, less likely to nicely explain the mistakes you've done while on Wikidia people are pretty young and it's, it makes it super easy like for, for a beginner like just to to start uh, step by step and uh, people like there was a, a session about men mentorship and I think it's definitely the right place to do so in Wikidia. But yet for English speakers, maybe you don't know Wikidia. So saying it very quickly, that was an encyclopedia for children that has been started in the French space, but it's also available in English, though I must say it's not very active in English. And uh, the focus is eight to 15 years old. So for example, my project has, is being run on Wikidia, but I don't think that's the, your case. So you will have to explain to us how you do that with the kids. What are you interested in? Okay. Okay. My name is Pelagia from Tanzania. We have been in Kiwix. Okay. Okay. Uh, open for, we were working together with Open Foundation West Africa as he mentored, uh, she mentored us on uh, Kiwix. So we did uh, um, one, uh, we did Kiwix in some of the schools as a pilot project. So they, uh, like, uh, they receive it in a very good way and find it something they can work with, something they can uh, access it. So we are hoping to introduce it to most of the schools, especially in rural areas and also in this seat. So it's something good for QX. Okay. So you will be next to explain to us quickly. You're on mute, so I'm not going to ask you anything. We do this rank first and we go to Ruby. What about you? So um, you? mine is also, I'm Eugene Masiku. I'm also from Open Foundation West Africa. Um, I believe Ruby is going to speak a lot about it, but I'm just going to give a brief before she um, comes on. So we implemented the Quebec for Schools project. It started way back in 2016, where we train about 1,200 students and um, yes, 1,200 and 1,200 students from Ghana. And to date, we've touched about eight regions in Ghana, whereby um, students have been uh, thought about how to use Kiwix. We went to schools, we uh, spoke to teachers, we spoke to the ICT teachers, thought to them how exactly they can deploy the software on um, their computer labs in the schools. And they in turn also mm -hmm. thought the students how to use it. And um, this year, we're fortunate enough to um, go beyond Ghana. So we did the um, Kiwix for Schools Africa Mentorship Program where we gave the opportunity to 64 um, participants all over Africa to partake in a course on how exactly they can um, deploy KWIX in their various regions. So these 64 participants graduated successfully and we are fortunate also enough to have five pilot projects um, from this course. So we had people from South Sudan, Nigeria, Peggy from Tanzania here, um, Congo and then Burundi. So basically that's it. Congo, Burundi, yeah. Tanzania. Uh, Tanzania and Nigeria, Nigeria and South Sudan. And South Sudan. Okay. Do you have anything to say before I go to Ruby? No. You're completely new to this whole thing. So we're going to ask, I think it's best to ask, do you want to say something before I? Why are you here? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. I live in Canada. I have incredible internet connections and I don't have the challenges that all of you have in your lives. I really love the work that you're doing, though. Uh, as it turns out, I have to talk about how Wikimedia is used in education and Wikipedia is used in education and what its future is in a seminar in a couple of months. And I was so excited to see this program. So I'm here learning so much from you all. Thank you. OK, that's fine. Emmanuel, can you shortly explain to us what Kiwix is? I will try. I will try. So 
Kivix is a project, and the goal of the project is to provide a software tool set to help people enjoy content of the web, website, even if they are not online. So this is what we want to do, is what we try to do, and we have dozens of softwares, different software, allowing to do different things to do that. And the flagship product is the Kivix Reader itself, um, which allow to read Wikipedia offline. So we have a reader called Kivix available on almost all platform, all different kind of software, mobile or desktop, all different kind of hardware, mobile or desktop. And um, parallel to the software, we publish the offline version of Wikipedia and hundreds of other sources. So first year we had Wikimedia Conference, Wikimedia, so Wiktionary, Wikispaces, etc., etc., etc. And as well, non-Wiki, non-Wikimedia content like the Gutenberg project, the Stack Exchange website, iFixit, WikiHow. We can we provide a lot of Zimfa related to uh, YouTube channels, um, etc. So they have been around for quite a while. Lots of stuff: uh, desktop version, mobile version. Uh, server versions, anything depending on the project can, that can be set up, which is of interest to people. And then some time ago, they decided to start the Key Weeks for School program. I'm not, I didn't understand who decided to start it. Uh, was it actually from you guys or was it other communities that decided to, to do that? Can you explain? Um, yeah, so the Key Weeks for School Africa Mentorship Program um, like Eugene said, I don't want to go into that history, but I think Eugene has done a lot of introduction. It started as a volunteer. Um, I think, first of all, Felix Nati introduced KWIX after a one Wikimedia conference where he met Stefan, and he did it in one school in the northern region. And when I joined Open Foundation West Africa, I saw um, Maxwell doing KWIX in schools. So whilst he was doing that i decided to design some evaluation form for him to like ask teachers their feedback ask students their feedback and based on those feedbacks that we we're getting i realized that this is a very good program and this is something that is useful for a lot of the schools because um <laughs> we are facing a real challenge in africa especially when in my community in ghana this is a real challenge most of the schools secondary schools don't have internet running all the time and that limits students ability to um, research something that should be a basic <laughs> need is not a, a basic thing in Africa it's a luxury to have internet and so we saw that we could leverage on volunteer um, model because we have volunteers spread across um, the regions in Ghana so we developed a program where we train these volunteers and then they take the kids to the school so the way that we do it is we tailor the content because kids makes it easy for us to put whatever content that we want to put on and serve these schools. So we look at contents that are useful for the schools and then we put those content and on a pen drive. And that makes it even easier because I don't need a Raspberry Pi necessarily because that also, also comes with a cost that if you're not ready for, it can become a barrier. We, can, we just use a basic pen drive where we download all this content on and then give the volunteers a package, sort of like a pen drive, some little, little things that they need and basic transportation to take it to the schools that are in their community that needs the KWEX. And so when they take it to the schools, what they do is that it's not just installing it in the computers on the school because they have to download it on each computer in the school when they get to the school. But they also teach the, the children or the students how to navigate it on their computers. And that's how we do the training, okay? And also, we've seen that KWIX is a very, I mean, this KWIX program that we're doing is a very good model that we've seen in, uh, or a very good tool that we're using to introduce students to Wikimedia projects because Wikimedia has great resources. 
and there are a lot of content on all of these Wikimedia projects, but a lot of the times people don't know about it. And I'll use myself as an example. Until 2019, I didn't even know there's a community behind Wikipedia. I didn't know I could actually write on Wikipedia. I thought there were some professors that were actually writing on Wikipedia and all of the content. And I knew only Wikipedia. I didn't know about Wikimedia Commons. Wiki to talk about Wikiversity and Wikicodes and all of these amazing resources that we have in our communities. And so this is one of the ways that we use to also train the students that, oh, there are projects like this. We also make, um, <coughs> we also make tailored contents, like for instance, if it's Wikishionary, we don't put the entire Wikishionary, which aspect of the Wikishionary, maybe English Wikishionary is more useful for this community. If it's Wikipedia, we're looking at, is it biology, is it math, is it chemistry that is useful for the students, okay? So we put contents that are useful for the students. I think it's, it's really been amazing and the internet challenge is real. I will, I'm going to tell you a story. I went to a, a particular remote area and the moment I got there, internet was off. I couldn't contact my family. Even to make a call, this is very difficult. And before you could make a call, you have to stand at a particular pole. And that's how far you walk before you can make a call. So whenever that we wanted to call our families, we had to go to that place. And this is something that is real. A lot of places and Ghana are experiencing that. When we went to Wiki Naba, we also got contacted because people were hearing about our QX program and they were like, they really having the same issue in their country. And so that inspired us to launch the QX for School Africa Mentorship Program. And what that does is that we took the opportunity to mentor um, community members in other African countries how to have the skill, how to develop their own chemist projects like we're doing in Ghana because we have experimented it for the past three years. And so we taught them the model. There were lots of lessons that we learned along the way. We made them known because some of the lessons that we are learning right now, devices are a challenge. Okay, so we contacted Kiwi. So all the Kiwi's for School Africa Mentorship Program is in connection with um, Kiwi's itself. So it's a partnership that we reach out to Kiwi's that know why don't we bring Kiwix on board? Because Kiwix has the expertise. So if you're having any technical challenge, if you're having challenge with turning the ZIM files of a particular website, Kiwix is there to support us. So Kiwix bought into the idea. So I've been working closely with Stefan. Um, Emmanuel, I know behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'm, I, I must say that Stefan has been really amazing and supportive throughout the entire program and we're really 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 grateful for the opportunity yeah i just wanted to clarify that stefan is the ed of qx so this is the face and 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 you are the brain sorry um the <laughs> is the take okay is the non-take okay um wanted to ask you, Obi, are you are you planning to I don't know, why are you here? Ah. Just because it's she, she's your sister and you're supporting her. Yes, from supporting I'm a, I'm an educator and I've trained Odaha mm -hmm. uh, with the Kiwis program mentorship. Mm -hmm. And for my for my country, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's a tool that we really, really benefit from because we have the same challenge of internet connectivity. And we have uh, another challenge of educational content, controlling educational content we give to our students or students can have access to. Mm -hmm. So with Kiwis is a lot easier because now you they won't have they don't have to face the problem of interferences from social media or other avenues so that's why I'm here I'm telling you the Nigerian story okay so before I ask you a painful question I'm going to ask the remaining people here do you have a comment to make are you involved in such a program you don't want to speak you're just listening I don't, I don't want to scare you <laughs> What about you guys? Are you just interested? You don't know what the offline programs are? Are you planning to implement something? You want the microphone? 
Um, so we are also we also participated in the mentorship program, the QX mentorship program from um, uh, with Ofwa, the QX. So uh, with me, um, with my community, we are going to um, in the next month we're going to implement a QX um, training to one of the schools in Arusha just as a pilot to see how it goes. Then later on we'll um, scale it up to to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't know yet where, which are the difficulties. What about you? No. Okay. <laughs> you have a question. Go on. Um, so for Nigeria, one, one challenge we have with education is that the curriculum is very much backward. Um, I'm speaking as a Nigerian, right? That I grew up in Nigeria, I schooled in Nigeria. I don't know the Kiwix online resources that you have. Is it co is this from there for Nigerians and the curriculum is relevant to our curriculum? Because I mean, it's great that we have online, offline resources, right? Can go and read from and can benefit from, but how does it help them in school? Or how do you take the needs of the curriculum and students into play when giving them these resources? One, two, Nigeria has a culture of seeing the computer in schools as kind of like a shrine where nobody goes to or even opens. You're not even allowed to touch it, right? Because they will beat you or something happens to you in classes. So how do you battle the mindset of that computer as a shrine issue in Nigeria? When did you leave school? <laughs> I left school. When did I leave school? NY is 2020. So, so I don't know the type of curriculum you use that you're telling us it's backwards. It's not. I know we have... Um, it's not perfect, if I should put it that way. I, we were, my set was the first set that started the C334 system. Good. And after that, there's been a kind of improvement on the curriculum. So I shouldn't say it's backward. It's not. Secondly, it's not all schools. You said they see computer as a shrine. No. In Nigerian system, there's what they call the school structure is divided into two, public school and private school. In private schools, they are allowed to use computer. In fact, on the prospectus, your parents are asked to buy one for you. So a student is supposed to own a computer. In the public school, it's not like that. Under public school, there are two sets, the ones under federal government care and the one under state government care. The one under go federal government's care, some schools are used as pilot schools. They set up computer centers in those schools. My school is one of them. We have the Cisco, we have the uh, school media and the government aspect. We have like three computer labs. But some schools, they don't have. So the idea of seeing computer as a shrine, let me say, is just 20%. Then for the Kiwix, it originated from Ghana, not Nigeria. No, but, but that's the Ghana what? that brought it to us. It's Ghanaian that brought it to us. Yeah, Kiwi yes. did not. I've, 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 never, <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of it until I started the mentorship program under the offer. offer yeah. It was then I got to know that the, it, it originated from, um, yes, uh, the two, yeah. Ob so Ob for, I, I'm going to stop you here because we're nearly done. I would like oh, to, okay. I, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. I would like to have two more two more points, uh, one from you and one back from uh, René. I would like uh, to know if you actually implement some offline education program in uh, in Tunisia. And uh, to René, I think is the first one to implement the uh, Kiwix for Cool School program in a French speaking country, but I'm not sure of that. So maybe you can further comment. What about so in Tunisia, there is already a program with Wiki Africa uh, using uh, for Wiki Fundy. We, uh, so it's already, yeah, the challenge uh, for several, it has been running for several years, which is very good. And also yeah, with the QX, we are working on a new program, a new program that will allow us to generate um, offline application, offline mobile application using Wiki Data Sparkle queries. So you can 
try to query to select some some articles and build a mobile application for that. So this application can be used for education, for culture, for everything. So, and uh, we can provide this application for students so they can uh, they can read, for example, uh, a topic uh, about a topic or about uh, so a, a subject, given subject. Side note, we are currently producing the, the offline report of the year. That would be interesting that you write a little something about that so that people can go and dig. What do you mean I am taking the opportunities to finish that report? Yes. Um, yeah, because I, I, I do the work of asking them all the time and it's sometimes painful to get them to do it. Um, yeah, further mentioning, it's quite funny because the Kiwi Expo School program is currently mostly developing in the English-speaking world. Uh, the Wiki Challenge program has been there for six years, is only in French-speaking world, so <laughs> maybe there's a sort of division. But we also use Kiwi anyway, so you are the, the pillar there. Yeah. Yeah, so we also been working with the French community and Rene was the coordinator, more of the regional coordinator for the French community. So that's that's what I just wanted to add. Rene, do you want to say a last word before we part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you all of uh, of you guys. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, to have you in, in this session. Donc, euh, en français rapide, euh, je vous remercie tous d'avoir été là. C'était euh, très instructif, très intéressant de changer, de partager sur les opportunités qu'offre euh, le, le non-Internet dans les écoles, dans les, en éducation. Euh, pour finir, je vais juste rappeler très rapidement que euh, mon aventure avec Kiwix au Program School euh, s'est densifiée en RCA, qui est la République centrafricaine. Euh, lors de la, du mois de la contribution francophone, où euh, pratiquement pendant les sessions, Internet était très, très difficile d'accès. C'est ce qui m'a euh, franchement motivé à aller vers ces, ces opportunités, ces types de projets, ces types de programmes qui pourraient offrir à des populations qui n'ont pas d'Internet, mais de, de s'acquérir de l'information, de briser le gap d'information entre eux, celles-là qui n'ont pas d'Internet et celles qui peuvent avoir accès à Internet. Donc, c'est l'une de mes motivations les plus ardues encore dans les zones francophones et à travers le monde. Je vous, je vous remercie pour cette, cette opportunité, cette facilitation. Merci. Thank you, René. Thank you, everyone. I think our time is over by one minute. I'm super proud. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone has a last parting world? A word, not world. <clears throat> You've really impressed the socks off me, let me tell you. Uh, you're doing such great work and reaching parts of the, our world that have not had access to any kind of quality resources and information. That's fantastic. My question is, what's next? We let you with that. What's next? Next year, we <clears throat> discuss that further uh, because we didn't really have had the time to talk about the difficulties and they're awesome, uh, in particular cost, I think, and might be one. Uh, but uh, we can continue the conversation anyway. Just 30 seconds, right, for the what's next. So, um, yeah, what next? We're still continuing the work. A lot of communities have gained the skill this year and they're looking forward to implementing their programs next year. We're also looking for more support in the Africa region because one of the real challenges that we're also experiencing is lack of devices. And so we're looking for partnership, collaboration. There are organizations that are donating laptops. We need more of those organizations in Africa because this is a real problem. Devices, it's very expensive. It's not affordable. Yeah. Uh, partners to implement locally to go to the school. The last mile is super important. I found that really a problem, and that's why I can implement the program in, uh, with the Fondation Orange. The second thing is languages. Most of the resources we have are in English or French. So local languages resources might be called, cool. in particular, when we talk with the primary school kids, 
uh, because they need that in other languages. That's that's also a problem. So the creation of resources, uh, and I'll part on the final word on this. I did the Creative Commons um, Educator Certificate uh, in 2020, uh, 2022, and I realized that all the resources explaining intellectual property rights, even at the most basic level for kids, all of them were done either by France or by Canada, and all of them mentioned internet, YouTube, TikTok, blah, blah, blah. So can you believe we cannot provide this, these resources to explain inter uh, copyright to kids uh, who do not have internet? That wouldn't make any sense. So the, the creation of resources is really super essential, I think. I forgot to explain also that we created a game, a board game, uh, that is printable print and play. Uh, I'm going to introduce it uh, tomorrow morning at 11, so to promo, <laughs> if you want to come and play. It's explaining wikis, uh, W-I-N key, like the key to open the door. And uh, it's pretty fun. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but uh, it explains like how wikis function and uh, like pretty simply in a fun way. So yeah. uh, it's from 12. And, and it's quite fun. So pedagogical game, which is which is cool. It's the latest resource I'm aware of. Are we OK? Yes, pretty much. We close. Thank you very much. Thank you, René, as well. And uh, see you thank next you, time. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.